Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're looking at ridge regression specifically. This is part three and so a lot of the notation we're going to use comes from part one and two so I'd highly recommend that you go back and, and watch those videos. One note here is can we recover the original beta parameter once we have the beta parameter for the, you know, the ridge estimators? And the answer is yes. So if we take the ridge estimators and pre-multiply it by this matrix, we get our beta back. And here's a little proof of it. So first of all, here in this matrix, we want to left factor out X transpose X inverse. And, and that's what this quantity is right here, right? So you multiply that back in, you get the identity. Multiply that back in, you get this. Now we write out what the ridge estimator is, and we, and we showed what that is on uh, part one. We're also going to drive it on page two here. Um, it's this. Now, these are inverse matrices of each other, and it just leaves this, which is our, our least squares estimate for beta. So we do get it back. Now, let's look at the, uh, the length of the ridge estimator. Remember, the standard inner product is a measure of length of a vector, right? So we're, we're trying to find the, it's actually the squared length of this ridge estimator. So let's plug in the estimator, and we're going to take the transpose, and that's what this is, and this is just the original ridge estimator, right? This has been transposed. Um, this is a symmetric matrix, so we don't need an extra tick. Now let's plug in the singular value decomposition here, and I have a video covering that in um, the video 56 on canonical form. We kind of look into that in a little more detail. This. This is the spectral decomposition of X transpose X. So these are orthonormal eigenvectors. And this V is the same as this V. L is a, a diagonal matrix of uh, eigenvalues. D is a, a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. Um, this is the identity matrix, right? And then we do the same thing here. And this is the, the transpose of the spectral decomposition. I mean the singular value decomposition. So now when we when we left factor out of V and right factor out of V transpose and then distribute the inverse, we the V's cancel with this one and then we get V's here that, that cancel. I say cancel, they're the identity matrix so they don't factor in. And then when we factor it out of uh, here we get a, an identity matrix. So I'm skipping a few steps but then what's left over is the the y u1 l to the one half and the same way over here and this is a diagonal matrix now since it's diagonal the inverse squared is you just take the reciprocal of each of the diagonals and square them so that's what this is remember this is a diagonal matrix of uh, eigenvalues and this is um it would just be you know one over k and so and then you add them and then you square it and you get this and we're just going to call these arbitrary vectors W. Now when you do this multiplication, this matrix multiplication, you get this. Right? You're adding up, um, you know, it's a number, right? This is a one by something vector and this is a something by one. So you get a number. So the, And this is it. When you do that math, you can see that. But if we... Um, remove this k. Remember k is a, a positive value. If we remove it, then we just increase this, right? Because this, when the denominator gets smaller, which means this gets bigger. Now let's start unfolding things. W, you know, this going in reverse can be shown to be this multiplication. And then we fill in what W is. And then we stick in the identity matrix everywhere. We put uh, V prime V here. Um, we put uh, V prime V here. We actually, since this is squared, we split it and we put an identity matrix in the middle there. And that's what this represents. So the identity matrix, we split the D, that's a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, put an identity, put it in identity. Then, then we unpack it again. This is the spectral decomposition of X. This is X transpose X inverse. This is X transpose X inverse. This is spectral, the singular value decomposition of X. And, and maybe I misspoke earlier. That's a singular value decomposition. And we have Y. But that is 
beta prime beta. So that's the length of the beta parameter. So the length of this, the ridge estimator is always smaller than the length of the beta. And so that, you know, we're shrinking it down to zero is essentially what we're doing. So as the, the shrinkage parameter increases, the magnitude of our ridge estimator is shrunk towards a zero vector. Okay. So now let's drive this from scratch. And I'm also going to point out uh, how you would change this to, to create lasso regression. And so a different way to think about regression, a ridge regression. Now on, on one, we just stuck in the shrinkage parameters down the diagonal elements of the X transpose X matrix. But here we're going to drive it. So here's our model, and we subtract that beta to the other side, and it's least squares estimate since we're dealing with a centered and scaled model is y bar. So we're subtracting y bar from each of those, and then we're left with x and uh, epsilon. And so instead of calling this y star, I'm just going to call it y. Uh, it's an abusive notation, but I hate carrying that little star when I when I write these. So now. The goal is to find an estimate for beta. So we want to find the least squares estimate for beta subject to the constraint that the, the squared length of our beta uh, vector is L, right? We're, so we're restricting it somewhat. And this is actually, this, this is ridge regression. Now, what we would change for lasso regression we would, instead of saying that this uh, inner product is L, we'd say the absolute value of that beta parameter is L. And that's, that's the difference between ridge regression and, and lasso regression. Okay, so now we want to minimize this squared distance, right, least squares, subject to the length, the squared uh, length of the beta vector is some L. So since it's constrained, we need to use Lagrange multipliers. So this is our Lagrange multiplier. So we're essentially we're taking this and then we this has to be set to zero. So you subtract L over and then this function we want to equal zero, but some multiple of it. And and this is this is actually the shrinkage parameter. And really so really this piece right here would be the absolute value of beta is minus l if you want lasso regression so now to take the derivatives of this with respect to beta now we did this first piece in previous video 22 and here i've a, taken a uh, i have a video called derivative of quadratic forms and right and this is a quadratic form with the identity in the middle and we show that that equals this. And now before you send me emails, I'm using what's called numerator notation. Um, there's denominator notation, there's mixed notation. So if I can do anything for the statistical community, whenever you take derivatives with respect to vectors and matrices, it would be great to uh, tell what type of notation you're using. So now we set it equal to zero and First thing we do is divide everything by two, and then we we subtract that to the other side, and then we 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 get this. Now we left factor out of beta prime, so everything is fine. Now we transpose it because that the way my brain works is I like the unknown that we're solving for here. Now we take the inverse matrix of this, and that's it. That's our ridge estimator. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.